Oh, hello. Welcome, my friends, to another DaVinci Resolve 17 tutorial. In fact, today is a special day. 17.4 just got announced and released today. So today I'm going to be going over a feature that was pretty interesting that caught my attention. And we're going to be taking a look at what it is, why it's useful. So without further ado, let us indulge, my friends. So the new feature in question is effectively a new addition to the tracking window within the color page. Now what this enables you to do is track forwards and backwards at the same time with one click. Now this is a huge quality of life change. I'm going to show you why right now. To get started, we need to navigate from the edit page and go into the color page. Okay, so here we are on the color page and first things first, we need to navigate from the curves tab to the power windows tab. Now I have a video linked in the description dedicated purely to the power window and the tracking tab effectively what it does, why I should use it, why it's so amazingly powerful. So for a more in-depth video, please, 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 just take the time to watch that video. But don't click off yet, please, don't click off yet. So first I'm gonna show you the traditional workflow and I'm gonna show you this new workflow that you can do. So first things first, you'd navigate to the power window tab, click onto a power window of choice, resize the power window to find part of the image which you want to isolate. I want to isolate just this portion of her face. Then we need to navigate from the power window tab to the tracking tab right here. And since we're at the beginning of the clip, I would need to track forward, which is this. So as you can see, I'm going to track forward and the visual is going to use this giant, powerful brain to try and estimate where the face is and track forward in time automatically for you. That's all the keyframes. It's it looks pretty good. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to add blue, you know, crazy color, just so we can see how good the tracking is and it's done a pretty good job it's done a really good job in fact okay so that's the workflow of tracking from the beginning of the clip to the end now what happens if you want to track starting in the middle of the clip well again you need to go to the power window tab select onto your power window of choice isolate part of the image go back to the tracking tab and then you need to track forward so it tracks all the way to the end of the clip perfection then you need to go all the way back and then hit this icon to track backwards. Now, right now, it's not an issue because we have one clip and this clip is quite short. However, the moment you start to get a lot more clips, this one task becomes quite monotonous and tedious. It's very repetitive. So what this new tool does is it enables you to track forward and backwards at the same time. So all you need to do again is go to the power window tab, click onto your power window, isolate your image as normal, go back to the tracking tab. And you'll see we have this icon right here, right here. It says track forward and track in reverse. And as you can see, once I click onto it, it's going to track forward and automatically track backwards in the exact same spot. As you can see, perfect, it's tracked forward and it's tracked backward. Just like, look how, oh my goodness, this is, I know it sounds like a small quality of life change, but trust me, this is very powerful, especially once you have a large amount of clips to do this too. Now I know what you're thinking, well, Brandon, this is a very, you know, simple clip. Your subject isn't moving that much. And my friend, you are absolutely correct. So let us choose another clip. So here we have a different clip. Now what's interesting about this is the subject starts further away. We get closer into the subject. Not only this, but we're really making DaVinci's of work because the top of our subject's head is actually clipping off frame. And not only this, but you're going to see that our subject's orientation of the head movement changes. It goes from straight on and it rotates slightly off to the right. So let's see how <laughs> DaVinci Resolve is going to handle this, shall we? So we're going to start somewhere around here. We're going to go back to our power window, select onto our power window of choice. We're going to use a circular, select over the subject, go back to the tracking tab and we're going to track forward and track backwards. And let's see how it does with quite a difficult clip, shall we? Okay, so it's tracking forward first. Oh, okay. Okay, it's doing a pretty good job, as you can see. Re oh, regardless of our subject changing the rotation of her head and her head going off screen, it's done a pretty good job to track. It's not perfect. Nothing's ever perfect, but it is pretty close. And again, this is happening all with one clip. The workflow before, we would have to manually track forward, manually track backwards. So let's go to all the way to blue. Let's see how good of a track this is. It's not bad, not bad, not bad. It's looking pretty good. Let's go towards the end. Oh, as you can see, it's rotating with our subject. And that's absolutely insane. We could do a bunch of things here. We can add a Gaussian blur. 
increase this and as you can see it's tracking and it's working fine yep fantastic incredible but more practical example would actually be this we have our subject here and we want to just make her face pop a little bit more so we're going to brighten up the image also by the way if you want to show or get rid of your power window just click this icon down here to show your power window you can also get rid of it so i'm going to leave it hidden for now and i'm just going to increase my gamma and my gain brighten her face up just a little bit and i'm just going to add a little bit of color and as you can see before after before after before after and as we've actually added a power window it's going to stay tracked even when we press play the motion has been tracked even when her head is off screen and rotating not only this but after the footage has been tracked you can actually change and manipulate the power window after the fact so if we wanted to tighten up adjust the feathering a little bit we can do that and it'll still be tracked press play before after before after before after so before we leave there's two things first thing is i need to go back to the other image because there's one thing i forgot to do i need to press alt s then this is very important i need to apply one of my lots for my preset pack link in the description 50 percent off <laughs> All right, guys, so just before we leave, we're going to take a look at some comments. Okay, we've got from Sound of Music. Cool, very useful hack. Thank you for the tutorial. Thank you, Sound of Music, for watching. David says, man, you're good. <laughs> Thank you, David. Appreciate it. Skater says, super helpful. Thanks. Thank you. Wondering South African. Amazing. Just what I needed. Short, sweet, to the point. Cheers, bud. Thank you. Media Wolf. Thanks, man. Really helped me. No problem. Navo Star says, do you know how to make party flyers? I mean, sure. <laughs> Peter Thompson says, hi there, thanks for this. Are you working with the studio version? Now this is in relation to the single slash dual screen workflow video that I have. I actually found out after the fact that you can only do this in the paid version of DaVinci Resolve 17. And, and to do that, you would need the paid version also. I've updated the description to reflect this. Speaking of which actually, because it's quite difficult to find information about the different versions of DaVinci Resolve, I'm probably gonna put together a video explaining a few differences between paid and studio, whether you think you should go for it or not. So look out for that. If it's out by the time you watch this video, then I'll probably be in the link in the description. Arnab says, marvelous. Thank you for your smooth explanation as well. Now I can make screen recording with a round web clamp overlay easily. Thanks a lot. No, thank you. And Mevi says, how long before Blackmagic adds a photos tab? <laughs> Resolve already does mostly everything I need. No, nope, I agree. It's only a matter of time. Anyway, my friends. Thank you for watching the video. If you like the video, please press subscribe, comment, like, and I will see you on the next one. Peace.